coming next. I feel for you. And you probably lit up Victoria's world because she loves <laughs> kids as well and parenting and talking about all conversations there. So we may already be brewing what we'll call an ecosystem merger. With that, I'm going to shift to Dallas. Well, not Dallas, outside of Dallas, Texas, but somebody who I met through the Joyride podcast, but we had a great connectivity. Victoria and I went to visit Dallas and we had some really gracious hosting and we had a double date and I'll introduce Jay Mamie to the conversation who does many, many things, including a radio show, coaching, all kinds of stuff, but I won't steal his thunder. Jay, welcome. You're muted. Jay, muted. Quick, yeah. quick on mute. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for the invite, David. Yeah, and it's interesting, as I'm hearing a lot of you folks from the Northeast, I'm from New York too. Uh, I just happened to come out here to Dallas, uh, moved out here about two years ago. Uh, quite frankly, there's no snow in Dallas. Uh, there's no state tax in Dallas. And as many of you know, who live in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, the potholes are the pits in the Northeast. And there aren't any potholes out here. At least nothing that I've seen that's ruined my car so far. <laughs> okay. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, well, guys, I am a, I'm an entrepreneur, but not Uber entrepreneur since I was 13 years old. Uh, I've been on Broadway. I've been on, on, on Hollywood. I've done small parts in, in, in theater. So I'm a very eclectic, incredibly uh, diversified background. But what I do today is I am mostly I'm the talk, I'm the host of a radio talk show out here in Dallas. is the number one talk show in Dallas right now. Uh, we talk a lot about survive to thriving. We talk a lot about empowerment, a lot about uh, moving forward and developing your life personally. That's why I need to connect with a man uh, over there, Ajay Gupta. When you mentioned Tony Robbins, we've got a lot to talk about you and I, brother. I'm a good friend of Dragon. I don't know if you know Dragon Joukowsky. Uh, Dragon is a cool guy. Oh yes. Yeah, Dragon's a very dear friend of mine. Yeah, Dragon's a good man. He's a good man. Um, so we do a lot of stuff. My background is in financial services. I still run a financial services company. But apart from coaching and writing and speaking and doing a bunch of other stuff, uh, I, I just enjoy meeting new people. And this is why I'm on here. Fun fact for me is I have a twin. I have a twin brother. His name is Joe Maney. So if you happen to run to a guy in New York that looks like me and he doesn't say hello back, don't get offended. It's him. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, Jay. So great to have you here. And like we even Jay and I are talking about potential ecosystem merger, what we can create together. And that's a lot of what this is, like talking to people, making connections and then figuring out how can we up level each other in a new direction, potentially the same direction. With that, I'm going to go to Shala. Shala, I don't know much about you, but I hear I see Mother Miracle on your nameplate. So I'm guessing there's some connectivity. Also, children, parenting, Victoria, Ajay, there's all this stuff going on. Maybe share a little bit about who you are and, and what's going on for you. Um, well, I'm born in Iran and I uh, educated in Iran as a uh, being an architect. Then 1979, we had a revolution so I came to San Francisco and I'm here in Marin County and San Francisco uh, since 79 and I um, went to India uh, and to a fun trip and uh, there I fell in love with the slum girl and I came back to San Francisco and 18 years ago I sold all my belonging my house my ripped my letter and photos and wipe up everything behind me and I went to India now 18 years I'm in India and I open a school from slum children now I have 522 brilliant kids and it's a technology school and that's how I met AJ he's coming and coaching my kids to be a entrepreneur to be a um, uh, prime minister <laughs> <laughs> and I also uh, had a pleasure to have Anil G over there and uh, encouraged me to put all over the school this um, phenomenal uh, words, encouragement word that I'm going to be a <laughs> amazing person. And uh, so that's how I know uh, these people. And Fun about me, well, uh, in 1984, I uh, opened the largest uh, club in <laughs> West Coast, uh, largest club, Club Deviate, 
and I created it, I designed it, I uh, built it, and I had a partner and uh, I run it for four years and then I got out of it. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's good. Chal is a straight up gangster, like hanging on the West Coast party scene. So D Rush is an amazing group, and Neil, back to you. <laughs> yeah, Neil, you didn't really brief me on who we were bringing to the table, but <laughs> so, can just, I? Can yeah, I just? Can on. I just add one more? Th I just want to add one more thing. I think Shalaji, she understood what she does, right? So she, you know, for a woman to leave everything in the United States and come to an in, to come to India, and it's, and I, I don't mean this in any negative way, but for a white woman to come to India and set up a school, and she provides outstanding education to these to these kids who are literally come from less than less than seventy five cents a day. That's what their parents make. And she teaches them everything from happiness to emotional learning. To, and these kids are geniuses, M-O-F-O -O geniuses. And uh, is, she's done an amazing job. So uh, hats off to her for that. Awesome. Incredible. I, I guess I didn't know the level of all everyone who's here, but great to have everyone and specifically you, Shala. Thank you for, so much for being here. Heartfelt energy came in and appreciate that. Last but not least, in terms of contestants for today, not contestants, but it is conversation where we're having is down back to Florida, the east coast of Florida. Romy is there. Quick intro for her is we met on a plane side by side didn't know what to expect. It turned into an initial conversation which went beyond the three hour flight. And we've just been connected ever since. And she's an incredible, incredible energy soul. Romy, welcome. Share a little bit about who you are and what you're up to. Thank you. Thank you for the warm introduction. Yes, I'm Romy. I work in real estate down here in South Florida um, in the Miami area. Mm. And I'm actually spending to Texas. Uh, I'm in the process of getting licensed there. And I've been to Houston a few times. I also been to Dallas, uh, San Antonio. I am going back to San Antonio now in November um, to explore a little bit more because I'm a little bit undecided between Houston and San Antonio. The two places has great things. So it's a big of a decision for me. Yeah, but I want to have a presence, uh, real estate presence in, in, the, in Texas. So what else? Um, I love dogs, I guess. The fun fact about me, I love them. They drive me crazy. I'm a mom of a schnauzer. They stand their schnauzer. They're super adorable. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I also love traveling. I don't, I don't know exactly. I've probably been to... 15 different countries or more, not like 40, nothing like that. <laughs> I'm not trying to compete, but like no 40, about around 15 countries. And I loved Italy. I really like Zurich, the city uh, in Swedish. It was amazing being there. Um, there's a lot of different places that I've been. I, Spain, I thought was amazing. I love traveling. I love experiencing different cultures and different food. And especially I, when I was in Zurich, I got to interact with people on a train station as I was um, going from Zurich to Milan by train. And it was a very interesting experience to see how the locals felt about politics, economics, the world politics in general, even about the United States. Um, I don't oppose and I don't get my feathers roughed over any comments that anybody can possibly make about our system, our president or nothing like that. I think America is a great place to live. It's not the only great place to live. I, I'm very grateful and fortunate to be here. I was born in Brazil, by the way. I've been ah, well, I don't want to, Romy, I don't want to inter interrupt you per se, but want to make sure we move this forward. But clearly we've up-leveled travel conversation, travel goals, and everything else that's <laughs> going on along with that. I'm, I'm loving the energy. And I mean, I, I'm now trying to figure out what my next trips are or how many trips I'm going to take this year uh, with that. But Romy, great to have you on and looking forward to how this all goes. With that, I'm going to segue into the folks who are going to do a little bit of just feedback and what we might call evaluations as we move forward into the, the role play segment. I'll introduce what I'll call my, my better half. I'm going to play with the mute button here, but Victoria is with us today and sh we've been on an incredible journey over the last, i to be careful how many months it's going on 
Eight. eight months just got help with that one but with that she's an incredible soul she's a therapist she's so many other things which i won't get into because the list is endless with that victoria i'm gonna play with the mute button here i'll go off you go on here we go awesome, awesome. so <laughs> good okay can everyone hear me yes excellent i have to put you guys on actually there we go sorry yeah okay um hi everyone i'm so happy to be here this is now numerous times and I'm the judge today. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm a therapist, I'm a speaker. Um, many, many years of working with children and teenagers, um, over 12 years in the academic system and also in my private practice and professing in Columbia University and Boston College only to find that I'm really, really passionate to reach children through their parents. So I have been dubbed the parent whisperer. I work a ton with parents and people about to become parents to really get in touch with themselves so that they can have access to the relationships that they want with their children. It's something I'm so, so passionate about um, and I'm happy to be here. And one of my fun facts with the beautiful um, Ajay, right? Ajay and Anil's accents and all of this talk yep, about yep. Um, travel has me thinking about my travel and the accent. I, I don't even know if you know this, but I traveled abroad and studied abroad in London. Um, my third year of college, I, I lived there for uh, a little bit over a semester. Um, and what you don't know, David, um, I actually majored when I was there and I thought that I would be a fashion, um, a fashion journalist only to find I loved looking at Louboutins and meeting Madonna at a flea market looking at lingerie together, but I hated writing about fashion. But that was a really, really interesting, fun cultural experience. So that's my fun fact. Well, Victoria, welcome. And quick, quick question that will relate to like my fun fact later. Um, as a therapist, as a person analyzing like mental stability of people, what was your assessment of what we did in going into the ocean that Sunday night in Long Beach Island in the middle of those ocean conditions? So give me your, your therapeutic analysis, please. Am I allowed to curse? Yes. You guys are fucking crazy and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your clinical diagnosis and I will accept. You're fucking welcome. Thank you very much. All right, David, back to you. Love it. So it's you, there we go. Look at this. We're a well-oiled machine. Clearly it's not just about partnerships in business. It's partnerships in taking a romantic relationship to the next level. And that's what we just did here right now. I learned something new about my significant other. With that, last but not least, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Jenna Richardson, who I've come to know recently, but have discovered that she is an incredibly dynamic woman, not only in her relationships, but also in her business life. And we're talking about some potential partnerships and build outs and collusions together. Jenna, with that, I will give you the stage to quickly introduce yourself. Hi everyone, thanks D-Rush. So excited to be here and meet all you lovely folks. So my name is Jenna Richardson. My background is in international business and management consulting, but as of about six years ago, I turned transformational health and life coach and entrepreneur. And um, I will have to say that the theme of, of parents and children and relationships is, is really coming through on this session. And so the reason that I made a major career transformation was because my, of my son, Carter. And I will speak to Anil's comment earlier about kind of COVID and relationships, which is that I have learned more about myself and about others and about the fact that our children can become our best and most influential teachers over the last six months. And that's truly been transformational. Um, but I really believe in integrity and influence and impact and um, believe that we're all here to, to learn and grow with one another and especially from our kids. So thanks, excited to be here. Awesome. With that, Sean, I think we're through intros. Want to just segue? Do you want to share anything or tee this up for how we're doing the, the role play and otherwise? Or how should we progress? Yeah, it's okay if I do a quick intro. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so hey, my name is Sean Callagy. I am co-founder of Unblinded, creator of this uh, Real Raw platform. Thank you again, David Anil. And thank you for being here. Um, so I realized 23 years ago that influence was a superpower when I had been at Columbia University undergrad, uh, gone on to law school with honors, and I had lost my professional baseball career. I was captain of the Columbia baseball team in 1992 due to hereditary degenerative eye condition. And I went to law school because I didn't know what to do with my life. I get to, out of law school, I get my dream job, and I realized that people who have freedom in their money, their time, their magic, are people that have the superpower of influence. 
over time, I realized the only people who are actually happy and enjoy magic are people who engage in integrous, integrous heart-centered influence. And that became the study of my life. I built a 40-person law firm, two years out of law school, $100,000 in debt with zero contacts and connections. Starting my credit card, I built five other successful companies. I've had the unique privilege of speaking at seven of the last eight Tony Robbins events. And for lack of uh, a better word, when it comes time to have platinum partnership uh, endorsed and presented from stage, I have the unique privilege of doing that and set the record for the most platinum partnership signups, which was more than 120 at Date with Destiny 2019. And I had my first virtual version of that uh, at the last event with Tony. And thanks to Tony Robbins, I jumped out of my first airplane a month ago. Fun fact, I'm blind. I taught a blind guy to surf recently. And because surfing is about the only thing athletically that I could now do purely on my own, like other than weightlifting, where there's a variety of like competing with something, yourself or something else. I try to start every day of my life in the ocean. So I'm now on the Pacific coast uh, here, uh, the haunted allegedly uh, Coronado Hotel Dell. Uh, surfed yesterday, I'll surf this morning already. I will surf later today. And I had uh, David, Victoria, Jenna was there, and Neil. We were all in Long Beach Island, New Jersey at our Unblinded Elite program. And these were straight up maniac lunatics. We all went to the ocean at night in pre-hurricane conditions, burnt our fears in the fire. And all of that is what's present here and unlocking the superpower of influence. Thank you for being here. David, do you wanna share a little bit of how the uh, role plays work? Yeah, absolutely. And just a quick point on what Sean just shared in Long Beach Island, we did have surfing lessons. Some of us were experienced surfers. Not one of us in the treacherous waters caught a wave aside from Sean. We watched like we're all done and we see him catching a wave on his board. And we said, did he just do that? And the answer was <laughs> yes. And we were all just like, what is going on here? This is wild. This is amazing. And he is absolutely incredible. So Sean, just great, great to be a part of this whole, whole operation, this whole community. With that, thinking about what's going to go on in the next hour that we have together, it's simple. I shared a little bit about most this with most of you prior to this, but you're going to get an opportunity to say, who's your ideal person that you want to have a conversation with? And then we're going to role play that conversation. So if it's me or if it's Anil, and what we thought would be fun is you get to choose. Who do you want to actually have do the role play? It could be Anil. It could be myself. Me. Pick me. Pick me. Yeah. So there's, there's a competitive thing there. None of us will feel <laughs> offended if you don't choose us, but that's the option to you to make it a little bit more fun and dynamic. You get to choose who you want to role play with. And then we have a three minute conversation. He's got his fun nose on. He's got his heart on his shirt. I've got virtually nothing aside from a marathon, 2018. Uh, but with that, so you're going to get to choose who that person is. We're going to do a three-minute role play. And then we have Victoria, Jenna, and then either myself or Neil may be giving some feedback along the way as well about how did that conversation go? What's the goal? The goal is simply to go from some kind of hello to some kind of yes. It could be as simple as we should spend some more time getting to know each other, talking about where there might be potential for us to move something forward. It could be that simple, or it could be, you might wanna, you know, depending on the conversation is, maybe it's actually, yeah, let's, let's get an agreement, we're moving forward, we're doing something dynamic together. Three minutes, it's a short period of time, I know, but that's the challenge here, and then we'll, we'll evolve it from there. Sean, anything else that you wanna add or interject, or was that sufficient? D-Rush, you are impressive and beyond. So thank you for that incredible encapsulation. Great job. On we go. All right. With that, Jody, I introduced you first. So maybe I'll tee you up. You're a, a master at what you do. So I'll give you this stage. You, you get the option of choosing myself or the love doctor. And so with that, choose who that is and then tell us who you want us to be. It could be, it could be us, like who we are as individuals, or you could paint the picture of the person that you want to interact with. Does that make sense? Um, kind of, I'm a little like, I'm going first and I have no idea. I, I don't really understand exactly what we're doing. So I hope I don't throw us can I, off. Can I jump but... in, David, real quick? So all, yeah. all we're doing okay. is yes, is the place from which everything happens in the world. Yes is what creates a relationship. Yes is what creates the destruction of a relationship by people saying yes to somebody else or something else. Saying yes to a business is what builds it. Saying yes to a hiring situation on both sides is what accelerates. Saying yes is what elects a president or not, right? So the space is, how do we go from hello to yes? There's a science to it. A lot of us think it's like just sort of like who we are and our personality conditioning. And we have general words like charisma and pull. But what's the science behind all of this? That's what this show is all about. 
And so with all these incredible people like yourself, um, we role play it. It's kind of like American Idol meets Shark Tank meets sort of like March Madness or something. Like, right? How do we create that dynamic of hello to yes with anybody that we want either Anil or David to be? And what I would always recommend is that it be a yes that's meaningful to you in the world. So like David said, it could be an ideal client. It could be somebody to give money to a charity. But what's the yes that you'd be seeking? And this is not like Boiler Room meets Wolf of Wall Street. This is integrous, heart-centered yes. So it's hard to get to a, a yes to the big question in three minutes. So it could be just for a longer meeting, an encounter. But what leaves that imprint on somebody that says, you know what? I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you more. And then I'm saying yes to. And that's what this is about. Does that make some sense or not? Yes. Yeah. So who would you like, David or Anil? Is, is it David I, or Anil? Who would you like them to be? So I, I was, you know, I know David pretty well. So I was thinking I challenge myself and go with somebody else. No offense, David. No, yeah. not taken. Go for it. You, you, you made the right like, choice. You okay. made the right like choice. Anil. So am I going with the love doctor? Because that there interests me. Okay. Yes. So, you know, my, I guess we're just, we're just um, role playing here. So I'm going to be me and you're going to be you, right? Or, or, he could be anybody, or he could be anybody you want him to be. If you want him to just be. Okay. I'm going to be me. You be whoever you want to be. But I'm addressing you and asking you questions thinking you're um, a relationship guy. Great. Okay. Let him be there. Okay. okay. Perfect. Drop in. Okay. David, okay. you're going to keep time, David? Yeah, I'll keep it, Jody. I'll, I'll just wave when it's yep. at like two forty, two thirty, just so you have an indication. There's thirty seconds left. I know it's short, but that's the part of the game here. Okay. Awesome. You know what? Anil, Anil, great to meet you. Um, boy, I, I would love to pick your brain. You know, one of the things that um, is the most valuable thing in my life is relationships, because I absolutely understand that my greatest joy and my greatest pain in life have all come from relationships. So it's a, it's, a, it's a top of my list for me. So I would just like to get to know you and ask you, um, tell me, what is it that you do and how did you get into your profession? You know, I, I help people overcome obstacles that prevent them leading a richer, fuller, happier life. And it's a very special gift. Uh, I'm on a mission to reach a billion people by December 2222. How are you going about that? Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where are you right now in that? I'm about 63 million. 63 million. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so to what, you know, can you give me an example of what a love doctor or relationship guy does? Like, what does your day look like? So my day is uh, very, fairly uh, easy. I only uh, speak to two or three clients a day. I, I really, I'm not out to uh, overwork. I want to create great delivery. So I have to keep my mind fresh. So, um, I, I do two or three calls a, a day and then I would uh, uh, do some podcasts or Zoom calls and offer my services. And um, so if, um, you know, do you talk to people, do you think that health can come into um, relationship counseling or relationship uh, mentoring in any way? Do you ever talk about the topic of health and wellness or the overall art of your well-being? You know, um, we asked Richard Branson, what are the two most important things in life? And he said, relationships and health. You cannot have amazing relationships without health and you cannot have health without amazing relationships. So they're absolutely something I talk about all the time. Oh, I love that. Can you give me, um, like, can you give me an example of that? How, how would you, how do you incorporate health into that conversation of relationships? Well, health is mental and physical. So if you're not physically able to play with your kids or play with your family or have energy to be with your family, they're not benefiting, you're not benefiting, you're gonna die early, you're not gonna be able to be at your best. So health is everything. Well, that, so I, tot I totally agree. I think we have a lot in common because relationships are extremely important to me, like I said. So if there's any way we could partner up, I sure would love to get to know you better and connect. Yeah. I would love to know more about you um, if I could. Great. So David's waving. So I mean, how was that? Was that okay? That's 30 <laughs> seconds. You got time. Oh, that's my 30 seconds. second mark. Wrap okay. things up and that's where you were. So go for it. Okay. I was, shoot, I made that quick because I was trying to end it. Okay. So, de so definitely, um, Anil, I absolutely think that you and I could have some great conversations and I would love to know it, ways that I could um, utilize the people in my life and my networks to 
to, um, you know, help have you be a difference in their life. And I would also love to speak to you about the people that I'm looking for to partner with both in their health, but also in their finances as well, because I play a big role in helping people free, uh, gain time freedom and financial freedom as well through my business model. I would love that. Thank you, Jody. Good to meet you. All right. My Amazing. Well, that set the bar high, Jody. Well done. That was that was fun. Even though you didn't know what was going on initially, that might be partly my explanation fault, but glad we got clarity there. Uh, but well done. And now what we'll do is just give a little bit of feedback. Like, how did that go? And the way we do that is we turn to our amazing judges slash evaluators. And first, I will go to Victoria. She is up to pre and she hates going first, but I'm putting her into this. That's, this is all growth and development with that. Victoria, the stage is yours. Quick feedback. Okay, let's toggle our, everyone can hear me? All right, Jody, this was so nice. I actually kicked David under the table because we both had, he's going to kill me for this, but we both had a cough that's persistent, not COVID. We've been tested, but I've asked him urgently to go to urgent care and he has said, no. So I love that too. Health is so important. Um, <laughs> I loved hearing, uh, hearing you. So these are some of the high points. You were flattering right off the bat. You went in for the common point that you both have, which is relationships, which I loved. You asked him about him, which everyone, no matter how humble they are, if they love what they do, they love talking about themselves because they love promoting their passion and helping other people. And you went right there. Um, you asked him about process, which I really liked. You asked him, where is it that he would like to be and where is he now? And then you went right in for it, which is like this commonality that you and him have, which is health. And I thought that was perfect because health, if you don't have your physical health, you have nothing, right? And it's just so, so important. Um, so I loved all of that. And I loved your energy, just very even. And just, I could hear you speak forever. There's something about your voice. <laughs> it's great. Um, and just some feedback. Um, talk, like, I want to hear more about you, like talk a little bit more about you. And I'm sure with how successful you are, you have an amazing quick pitch. I would have loved to hear that a little bit more in the business that you have. Um, so that's something that was there for me. And then also, um, just lock in a time to connect with him, like make it like we need to talk, you know, and like bring that energy, like, like, so we have to do something about this kind of energy um, and then lock it in so that there's an excitement at the end of like connecting again, talking, collaborating. Um, and as a score, and by the way, I hate giving scores, but I got coached about this. I give you an 8.5. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you. And I love scores. You know, I used to be a teacher. <laughs> well, I, so I actually was sharing with him. I'm an academic. I, I teach at Columbia and Boston College. I love it, right? But I have rubrics for that stuff. I have no rubric for now. So I got I got told how to give these kinds of scores. And I think I did a good job. Incredible job. <laughs> I'm speaking through the other mic. We'll toggle mute buttons now. And uh, that was incredible. Sean, I've I can't take full credit for how well versed Victoria is in some of the formula that you probably just listened to, but uh, I'll take a little bit. Yes, as you should, brother Victoria. Amazing. What is Victoria? Victoria, what do you teach again in Columbia? I know, I, I know what you know. This. Oh, I teach in the master's uh, degree program at the School of Social Work. So I teach a lot of research and clinical skills. Um, and uh, I used to teach in Boston College, and I had a uh, my own course in post-traumatic growth. Awesome. Well, thank you for your wisdom and amazing. Yeah. Awesome. With that, quickly to Jenna for a little bit more feedback with her <laughs> expertise. And what did you hear, Jenna, share a little bit? Uh, and we'll go from there. Hi, Jody. So I thought that you were, you oozed authenticity. So I can tell that you were really genuinely interested in the questions that you were asking and also the answers that you were receiving. And it just felt very real. Um, so great questions. Um, we call it level five listening, which you really were in tune to and your, your questions followed a really strong progression as Victoria referenced. And I thought you had great transitions. So you knew that you were trying to get to a place, but it didn't feel uh, rushed. It felt very real. Um, and then I would say the only, the only feedback that I would give is, and I know this is such an awkward situation to be doing this in front of 
people that you don't even know, but um, we talk about going from your head to your heart. So there was, a, even though you were super authentic, there was a little bit of like hesitation, what I'm going to say next. And I just felt like if you spoke directly from your heart and kind of tuned everybody else out, that it would have just flowed a lot, uh, even, even better than it already did. Love it. Thank you, Jenna. And what Thank I can... You. What I can attest to just in terms of Jody, like she's all heart. And so even though sometimes that doesn't always drop in, uh, I, I can say that that's, that's certainly where she comes from in, in all that she does and the impact she's had on me. But thank you, Jenna. That was spot on. With that, I think we'll move on to the next person on Not the Price is Right, but the Unblinded Real Raw. And we'll go to Mary Beth, a veteran. I won't call it necessarily fully veteran, but you've been exposed to this before. So I'll let you tee it up. And who would you like to role play with? Anil, please, to change it up, David. Anil, two for two. You're on fire. Yeah, no good choice. Good choice. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, um, and Jody, way to, way to kill it as a newbie. That was awesome. Um, okay. So, uh, Anil, if um, you're, I'm going to give you the name of uh, uh, Joe. Uh, Joe is a past client. Uh, that we haven't connected in a while. He's hired us multiple times. But we haven't connected in a while. And um, he, uh, when I asked him over email to connect um, in September, he said, you know, let me get the budgets done. They're due in September and, and, and let's connect later this year. So my intention now is to um, call him and uh, set up a meeting uh, in, for this month. Perfect. Perfect. And with that, just to point some clarity, I will wave my hands at 2.30. That means you have 30 seconds left. So don't be thrown off by that. That just gives you a time frame. Okay, great. Go, Mary Beth. Awesome. Okay. All right. Um, so, Joe, this is, this is Mary Beth. Uh, do you uh, have a couple of minutes? Always for you, Mary Beth. Oh, thank you, Joe. Um, how have you been doing? We haven't, we haven't connected in a while. I know... Uh, uh, you know, your daughter's back in school and uh, it changes in the office, but I wanted to start with you first. How are you? You know, um, I'm a lot more relaxed now. I've got all, my, all the numbers done. The, the kids are back at school. I can breathe now. Oh, good. Good. And I acknowledge you because I understand, right, your your boss recently left and, and hasn't been replaced yet, I, I hear. And so for the team, the leadership team to come together and, and get that budget exercise done must have it really taken something. It, 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 it was difficult, but we, you know, we always handle it and we always do and we always have. So uh, I feel good now, relaxed. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, so um, yeah, I um, uh, was calling to see, you know, might not uh, have much time at the moment, but uh, um, if we could set up some time um, just in the next couple of weeks here to to do a bit of a, a deeper dive. Now that you have the the budget done, I you know uh, thinking about that like that's the what right? It's like the what for 2021. But uh, now perhaps the next question uh, is is how uh, you know how to get done uh, in 2021. Would what would you want? Is is your your thinking going there yet? You know, um, I'm I'm just chilling out. I, I'm not thinking about anything at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Right. Taking a, taking a bit of a breather. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Are you are you having some some fun? What is it you're doing to to chill out? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> good, good. All right. Um. So, <laughs> um, so that's great. I'm glad to hear because you, I know you as somebody that, right, it's just always going, 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 and you're supporting Europe and you're supporting the West Coast uh, here in Boston and you're just going, going. So I'm just delighted. I think this is the first time I'm hearing you are taking a breath in the years we know each other. So I so acknowledge you for, for doing what you need to do for you. And, you know, uh, you've been a great help in the past and I do appreciate all that you've done for me. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's always a always a pleasure. Transitions, and even when he kind of threw you a little bit by saying, "Hey, I'm just chilling out. I'm relaxing," uh, you, you adjusted to that really well. You could have either totally backed down and said, "All right, well, great to talk to you," um, but you were slightly uncomfortable. But then kind of bounced back and said, 
all right, well, I will respect and, you know, and, and appreciate that. However, let's get some time on the calendar, which you, you then did do. So I, I thought you did a very nice job. Thank you. Thanks all right. We'll, we'll tee it off to Victoria for some, some more. Well done. Hi, that was, that was really great feedback, Jenna. And I might, oh, I love your background, Marybeth. Um, and I might echo a little bit. Um, Marybeth, you are so warm um, in your approach and just your energy and you do have a beautiful smile. Um, I loved how you focused on uh, Anil and you acknowledged him and you really recreated him nicely. I liked that even within the time restriction, you just so easily stayed with where he was at. I think that it's even for experienced people who deal with people all the time is not always occurring as easy. So that was awesome. Um, and I loved how when he did throw you for a loop, what I always say when, whenever I, I'm talking to a potential client, um, I always say a no is just a maybe that's going to turn into a yes. And you did that masterfully where you didn't really, I mean, you kind of got thrown and, you know, kind of played in it, but it didn't feel as a fluster. It just felt like you were just kind of floating like a cork in the ocean with him and you were kind of going with it. And um, I really loved that. And then at the end, you got your meeting. And I think that because you didn't get flustered, you, you stayed with him in energy. Like, you know, he was just sharing that he's kind of relaxing and you're like, all right, I get that. And then you just kind of went into it with the same sort of pace and it just felt really great. It felt like you were really empathic and wonderful. So I thought that was awesome. I give you an 8.9. <laughs> <laughs> You rush, you got judges that are on it, brother. Let's keep rock, rock. They are crushing it, absolutely. Mute. Mute. <laughs> Boom. All right. Oh, right. Oh, there we go. This, this is mastery at its finest, Sean. Hey, hey. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you as like God from like the heavens or Man Olympus. So it's perfect. Yeah, we, we could add that into the overall platform. Yeah. Hey, David. Yeah. Can I throw my two cents in, please? Absolutely. Go for it. All right. Now, guys, I've, I've got an unfair advantage because I am a sales psychologist expert. I've written books on it. So I'm, I'm like this. I'm hearing you, Mary Beth. I'm like, I can't help myself. Because I can give you one tip that's going to help a conversation like that. Because being in sales, all of us have had those conversations in the past. Isn't that true? We've had those conversations where we want somebody to make a decision and stop stringing us along, okay? So it's okay to have the niceties in the beginning, but after a while, here's what you have to understand from a psychological standpoint. Joe knows why you're calling again. Mm -hmm. There's no mystery there. There's no romance there. He knows why you're calling. He wants, uh, you want to get on his calendar. So after you hear from the, the, the prospect that he says, I'm not doing much. I'm not ready. And you kind of sense that this is going nowhere. Here's how you can turn it around because it's going to force him to give you an answer that you can hold him accountable to. Here's what you say. I would say to say, Joe, if you were me, when would you call me back to schedule something? If you were me, then when would it be the right time to call you? You guys understand that if you were me, yeah. When would be the right time to call you? Because here's what you're going to find out. He's going to give you an answer, whether you like it or not. He's going to tell you, well, call me in about a month. If I were you, I would tell you to call me in about a month. But then you can hold his feet to the fire, call him in a month and say, hey, Joe, I'm calling you back. Just like you said for me to you asked me to call you back. Or he's going to say to you. Well, let me get back to you on that. He's going to continue to dance. And the more he dances around the answer, here's what you're going to find out. I need to roll on because this was probably not going to materialize. Because the worst thing that, can, that any salesperson can experience is discouragement. And too many conversations like that with Joe's leads down the path, the downward spiral, the downward spiral of discouragement. We're so human. Bad. It happens. So cut to so the chase and ask her, if you were me, when would you recommend I call you back and put it I'm back so on him? And wait for awesome. the answer. Does that make sense? Oh, we may be having some challenging player and Neil. Very back. Trump, could you repeat that? I think we've cut out. I don't know if I'm cutting out or you're cutting out, but it might be you. Can you hear me or no? Yeah, we can now. Okay. No, I was just saying. So that was awesome feedback. And I was saying, so why don't we keep rolling right there? 
and just go from there and who um, would Jason like you or Anil today? I'm Jay. sorry. Is it yeah, Jay. No, Jay, you're up. Who do you, who do you, I, Anil's 2-0. and oh, I'm 0-2. Oh who do you, you know, not putting any pressure on that, not feeling bad, but Jay, who do you want to work with? <laughs> Jody. Oh, all right. Jody, are you up for being a role player? Yes. Amazing. We're, we're really cross-pollinating here. I'll, we'll, we'll allow it to be because we are flexible. Jody, you, Jay, take it away. Who do you want Jody to be? I want Jody to be Jody. That's a good thing. Amazing. All right. <laughs> well, here, here we go. Three minutes. So, Jody, I understand that you are in the uh, health and wellness industry. Is that true? Yes. Let me ask you. That's a great industry to be involved in. As you can tell, I'm, I'm very much into fitness. I'm very much into health. I've, I've lived that life for a long time. I used to compete in professional bodybuilding, and I'm a big proponent of the health and wellness as an important part of your life. How long have you been involved in it? Se seven and a half years now, Jay. Two, two of oh, those good. years, I was still a full-time teacher, and then I was able to retire myself from teaching because of this. So, Excellent. So what it's, what happened then? I mean, that's that's a it's it's a great pivot because education um, and, and as far as teaching, you're an educator. Now you are still sort of embracing this education approach, except it's educating people on health and wellness. So kudos to you for making a smart transition, staying within the same highway. All you did was switch lanes. That's very very good. But I imagine that things have gone well for you because if you went full time in a network marketing business, it means that you've been able to develop a lot of distributors, fair to say? Yes. Okay, so now let me ask you, being familiar with the industry, I know that the greater the distribution you build will mean the greater the success you have, right? Yes. So if we were gonna measure, Jody, if I was gonna measure the success you're having as it correlates to the size of the team you've built, are you having all the success that you'd want? If, it, if we're gonna correlate the size of success with the size of your team, are you having all the success that you would want? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, I'm in a business where there's no limits, so I would never say that I would hit the point of where right. I wanna be. I like the answer you gave, Jody, because you're right. In the business that you're in, your success and your freedom and the financial freedom that you're seeking. And the reason why you gave up the safety and security and certainty of a salary is because you want to have that financial freedom with the, your financial freedom and the business you're in is going to correlate to the amount of people that you have. The more people you have, the greater the freedom. Am I right? Yes, you are. Okay. So let me ask you a question. How big a team do you need to have? Now, right, again, there's no limits. I get that. But give me a number of how many distributors you'd like to have for you to reach that success. Personal, personally enrolled, personal that I have. Personal or person. part of your organization, but personal um, for right so now, yeah. Within my organization, um, around 150,000, but my personally enrolled um, would, um, as far as distributors that um, work like I work, 10. So you're 10 away from reaching that financial success, that place of peace and freedom that you are seeking. Is that safe to, to say? About yes. 10 away? Yes. So if I yes. helped you find those 10, if I showed you two ways to help you find those 10, would you at least give me five minutes so we can talk about it? 100%. Okay. Yes. So then you and I need to have a conversation because I'll show you how to get not two, I'll show you how to get five in 10 days. All right, we are we are at it, but Jay, I'm in. Yes, Jay, I'm in. We've got we've got a yes, we've got a smile. With that, I will go back to Victoria. Victoria, how did that land for you, Jay? Well done, uh, Victoria. I mean, Jody, thanks for jumping in. Victoria, the stage is yours. Okay, this is intimidating, Jay. Because you're a sales <laughs> psychologist. What the hell? Okay, all right. Um, but maybe I can maybe I can be a contribution. I know I can, because Jay, you're so in. What is it, Sean? Zeus energy. Uh, yes. Yes. Right. And um, I'm like the goddess of goddess energy. <laughs> so I would love to share a little bit with you from that vantage point. But 
Um, wow. Like the confidence, obviously you have such confidence. You have this way of getting someone to see what it is they need, like right away. Right. And you obviously know what you're talking about. So, I mean, that comes, like, if I was working with you, I'd be like, yeah, he knows exactly like he's confident and not only confident, but like you're quick, you know, you're, there's no hesitation. Um, and a great catch on what's missing for, for Jody. Um, one of the things is, you know, I guess when we're sharing about, you know, her and, and just building rapport, and I know that it's hard because I've done it too in like three minutes, but also, you know, she caught that she was an educator and I know that you acknowledged her for it. And I would have loved to see a little bit more with like, just building relationship around like what, like for me, I was an, I'm not an educator, I'm an educator, but an educator who builds a business at the same time. I know what that's like. And like, wow, like where, where was she? Where is she now? And then where could she be based on like this progression that she's already had and just staying there with it and just kind of like being there with her and acknowledging her. Um, I think that would have been, I would have loved to see that. Um, and the confidence is booming. And then I would have just loved, I guess, to see a little bit more because Jay, we had dinner and you're just so sweet and you have a great smile and you just have this like way of being. And I would have loved to have that come through in your speaking with Jody because the way I'm watching you, it was like, boom, boom, boom. But I would have loved to see the Jay we had dinner with too. Um, well, if I had 30 minutes, I would have loved loved on her big time. I know, I know. Hey, can um, I just David, uh, the objective was to get a yes. The objective was to get a yes in two and a half minutes. That's the objective. <laughs> hey, Jay, <laughs> can, I, can I jump in? Sure. So, yeah. yeah, could we just do something for three minutes? So, Jay, I'm super impressed by your congruence, your intensity, your progress, your success, obviously. So, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Yeah. What, what brought you and prompted you to say yes to come on today? David invited me. Yeah, but obviously like people invite you to do lots of things. So what prompted you though to say yes to this? Because I don't think anybody does anything unless there's like a wanting for a something. Does that make sense to you? I mean, you're in sales. It, 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 does. it does. Yeah, so what's it, the it wanting? Does. Let me just share with you something. No, what, yeah, what's the wanting for you? Number one, the relationship, the the. You're right, because I do get invited to a bunch of this, a bunch of these types because I've, I've, there's enough people that I've helped along the way.